Hello, and in this lesson, we are going to dive into VPC basics, specifically VPC definitions, conceptual VPC discussion, VPC components and data flow, and accessing a VPC in the AWS console. So I'm actually gonna start with that last part first. So over here in the AWS console, to access your VPC and use modifier change, any of the various things we're gonna talk about in the next few lessons, just scroll down under networking and click on VPC. And this here is going to be the section we're going to be concentrating on for the next few lessons. So to get started, what is a VPC? Well, VPC is short for Virtual Private Cloud. And here I've provided a simplified definition and an AWS definition. For the simplified definition, this is really more how I want you to conceptually think or understand VPCs for the purposes of just kind of learning what they are and for the purposes of this lesson. And then we'll talk about the AWS definition, which becomes a little bit more advanced. But for the simplified definition, a VPC is a private subsection of AWS that you control in which you can place AWS resources such as an EC2 instance and databases. You have full control over who has access to the AWS resources that you place inside of your VPC. Now, with the AWS definition, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud or Amazon VPC lets you provision a logically isolated section of the Amazon Web Services Cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. You have complete control over your virtual networking environment, including selection of your own IP address range, creation of subnets, and configuration of route tables and network gateways. Now, a special note here, when you create an AWS account, which we've already done, a default VPC is created for you. So if you look here in your account, you will see there's already one VPC. This is your default VPC, and it comes pre-made with subnets, access control list, internet gateways, route tables, everything that you need to make the VPC work. But we're going to discuss all of these components. Now, if you took our AWS Concepts course, you will recall that I created an analogy between Facebook and a VPC, which I'm going to quickly review again here. The way I want you to think about VPC is very similar to the way that you may think about Facebook in terms of how they are designed conceptually. So with Facebook, you have your homepage, your friend has a homepage, and I may have a homepage. And in your own homepage, you can post things, right? Videos, photos, or posts, and you can decide who has access to view your posts and who doesn't. It's very much the same way when you think about your VPC and that in Amazon, Everybody has their own VPC. You have one, I have one, our friends will have one. And in our VPC, we will put things like EC2 instances or RDS databases, and we'll have protection around that in which we can only allow in certain people that we want to allow in or block out others. So this is a very simplified way to look at what a VPC is, but I think it's a very good analogy for somebody who's just trying to understand the basic concept of what a VPC is. Now, taking this a step further, let's look at a different way to conceptually explain what a VPC is. And for this, I want you to think of your home network. Whether you have ever thought about it or not, if you have internet access in your home, you have your own private network. And what are the common components of a home network? Well, you have wires, right, that come into your house from the street, which connects you to your internet service provider. You have a modem, which is your connection or gateway to the internet. You have, again, wires connecting your modem to the router. You have a router or switch, which is the device that allows you to connect devices to the network and routes traffic to other devices on the network or through the modem out to the internet. The same is applied to traffic coming into the network. And lastly, you have computers, cell phones, or any other smart devices that you own. So I want you to just conceptually understand your home network in that you have your devices, the computer or the phone you may be watching this video on right now, and those are connected to a router, which may have a wireless access point or it may be hardwired. Your, your router is connected to a modem, and your modem is what connects you to your internet provider, 
which allows you to connect to the internet. So you have this flow of data anytime that you send or request information from something external to your home private network. But your home private network is private, meaning that nobody can get onto your home network unless they have your passwords to access your router and connect to your network. So now let's look at a couple of examples of scenarios with what might happen if certain parts of your home network were to become disabled. So if you were to remove or disconnect the cable DSL or fiber modem that you have that connects you to the internet, well then internally, you can actually still communicate with devices using the router. The router itself does not need an internet connection to allow one computer in your network to talk to another. So you can share files between your computer and your phone using your router without ever having an active internet connection. However, if we switch that around and your wireless or wired router was disconnected or disabled, you would actually still have an internet connection coming into your home or your private network because the modem would still be connected to your internet provider but your phone, but your computer or phone would have no way of actually connecting to the modem. So you need every one of these components in order to have a fully functioning working network that has internet connection. So now let's reorganize this information into something that looks more like our VPC diagram on our main page. So here we have the internet information flows through and connects to our cable DSL fiber modem, which is the entry point into our home for our private network. That is then connected to our router or switch, which then provides the route to the various devices that we may have connected. And for a lot of us without even realizing it, we do have a firewall in place, which is a level of security within our private network. So with this image in mind and this understanding of our home network, now let's take a look at what the components of a VPC are. Well, if we kind of switch back and forth really quickly here, we're going to see some very similar things. So first, the internet up here is the same. Then we have our cable DSL or fiber modem. And now we have, for our VPC, an internet gateway. Next, we have a route table, and that replaces our router or switch. Then instead of a firewall, there is a network access control list. And instead of a laptop or cell phone, we have EC2 instances. So I make this comparison because I want you to be able to easily conceptualize what's going on here with a VPC. So just as with our home network, we have the internet connection coming into our home through our cable modem, then that connecting to a router or a switch, which will route traffic to specific devices depending on which device we are currently using and there's a level of security. It's the exact same thing in the VPC and I just want you to really have a good picture of this in your head of the way that data flows. So let's pretend that this is our computer that we're using. If I wanna access a website, I'll type in the URL. It's gonna send the information out through the route table, through the internet gateway out to the internet. It's going to get that website and then information is gonna come back in through the internet gateway through the route table, and the route table is going to tell us which computer to go to, and it's going to pass through the security layer and then back to that computer. So there is a real similarity in terms of just basic simplified architecture between your home network and a VPC. So again, to sum this all up, it is your private section of AWS where you can launch and provision AWS resources and control all aspects of it just like you do your home network. So let's make a couple of notes here. So again, when you create an AWS account, by default, a VPC is created for you, including the standard components that are needed to make it functional, including the internet gateway, a route table with predefined routes to the default subnets, a network access control list with predefined rules for access, and subnets to provision AWS resources in, such as EC2 instances. So everything here has already been made for you by default, except for these actual instances. These have not been created yet. But the entire infrastructure, all of these components, all of the way that the data flows from the internet into your VPC and back out again, is already there for you to use.
So with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.